In this video we're going to be looking at composite bars, but more specifically we're going to be looking at series composite bars. Now the diagram there shows an example of a series composite bar where we have two pieces of material end on end and we have a single force being applied to one end of the composite bar. Now I've labelled two different materials there. I've got material one on the left hand side and I've included some data about that material. It has an elastic modulus of 115 gigapascals, a diameter of 22 millimetres and a length of 65 centimetres. I have a second material labelled material two with an elastic modulus of 185 gigapascals, a diameter of 35 millimetres and a length of 65 centimetres. Now what we're going to be calculating in this question is the total change in length of this piece of material, which I'm going to call delta L. And that's the change in length in response to the force of 250 kilonewtons. Now because this is a composite bar, when we apply that force F, that force is going to be applied directly to material one, as we see there. But in actual fact, with it being a series composite bar, that force is also going to transfer to material two. So what we can see here is the force that's applied to material one is also going to be applied to material two. And in fact, we can write a statement about that. We can say that F equals F1, and that also equals F2. The force isn't shared between the two materials. Each of the materials is subjected to the same force. Now, because we want to calculate the overall change in length of that composite bar, we're going to need to calculate the change in length of the first material. Now, that first material is going to shorten in response to the force F. It's a compressive force. And the second material is also going to shorten in response to that force. They're going to shorten by different amounts because they're different materials and they're different diameters, but they're both going to shorten because they're both being subjected to a compressive force of 250 kilonewtons. It is worth mentioning that if this loading was tensile, then the same rules would apply. The forces would still be equal in the two samples of material, but both of the materials would stretch rather than compress. Now our second rule then for composite bars is that the change in length, or the total change in length, is the change in length of material one plus the change in length of material two. And we can see that from our diagram. So what we're going to do for this question is we're going to calculate the change in length in material one when subjected to the force, we're going to calculate the change in length of material two, and then we're going to add those two together, noting that the materials are shortening rather than lengthening. So first of all, we're going to calculate the stress on material one. So sigma one, equals F1 over A1. And the force being applied to material one is 250 kilonewtons. Well, kilo is a thousand, so 250,000 newtons. We need to make sure that we work in SI units. And the area, well, the area of a circular section is pi r squared. So if we return to our left-hand side there, we know that D1 is 22 millimetres. That means that R1 must be 11 millimetres, but we need that in metres. 11 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.011 metres. So our area of pi R squared can be written as pi times the radius of 0 0.011 squared. So the stress acting on material one then is 657,665,000. Well, I'm going to express that in megapascals. So 657.665 megapascals. So we're talking a very significant stress there. So the next step, if we want to determine the change in length, is to determine the strain. And we have an equation that states that elastic modulus equals stress over strain. I'll just write it in the top corner here. So elastic modulus is stress over strain. And if we rearrange that, we will get strain equals stress over elastic modulus. So our strain then 
the material one, epsilon one, is going to be stress one over the elastic modulus of that material. We've got our 657.665 megapascal. So times 10 to the six, divided by our elastic modulus for material one, which is 115 gigapascals. Now hopefully you recall that giga is 10 to the nine or billion. So 115 times 10 to the nine, and that'll give us the strain on our piece of material, which comes out as 5.719 times 10 to the minus three. Now strain doesn't have any units, so we can leave that as it is there. Now finally, we have an equation that links change in length, original length and strain together. And the formula that we have for that is as follows. Epsilon equals change in length over original length. We want to calculate the change in length, so we need to multiply each side of that equation by the original length. And we get change in length is strain times original length. Well, we know the original length of our piece of material one, so we can calculate its change in length. And the formula is delta L1 equals epsilon one times original length, and that's the original length of material one. Well, the original length of material one is 65 centimeters, but we're going to need to express that in meters, so 0 0.65 meters. Therefore, delta L1 equals epsilon 1, 5.719, times 10 to the minus 3, times the original length of 0 0.65 metres, giving us a change in length for material 1 equal to 3.717, times 10 to the minus 3, and that answer will be in metres because we've worked in SI units throughout. Now, if I wanted to express that answer in millimetres, I would just times my answer there by a thousand. And in doing so, I get an answer of 3.717 millimetres. Now, over on the diagram in the top left hand corner, I'm going to make a note of that change in length. So delta L1 is 3.717 millimeters just taking care with my units there and I'm going to do that so I can clear some space to calculate the change in length of material too so I've left my formulas for reference because each of those are still going to apply and we're going to begin in exactly the same way this time by calculating the stress on material too which is going to be the force on material too divided by the area of material too well, the force on material two is the same as the force on material one, 250,000. And the area of material two, again, it's circular. So the area is gonna be pi r squared. Now, if we refer to our information in the bottom right corner again, we have a diameter of 35 mil. Therefore, we have a radius of half of that, which is 17.5 mil. We need that in metres, dividing by 1,000, 0 0.0175 metres. Inputting that into our equation, we've got 250,000 divided by pi r squared, or pi times 0 0.0175 squared. And this time the stress on material 2 is 259,800,000. So I'm going to express that in megapascal, so 259.845 megapascals. Now if you're unsure on that conversion, all I'm doing is I'm moving the decimal place back six places, or most calculators have an engineering function. If I were to hit the engineering function, the answer would change to 259.845 times 10 to the six hence my conversion from pascals to megapascals. Now we can work out our strain, and the formula we're using is still displayed in the top right hand corner there, strain 
is stress over elastic modulus. But this time we want strain two, which is stress two over elastic modulus two. So we've got two, five, nine point eight four five megapascals, so ten to the six, divided by our elastic modulus. And material two has an elastic modulus of 185 gigapascals or 185 times 10 to the 9. Therefore, strain 2 equals 1.405 times 10 to the minus 3. And once again, strain doesn't have any units, and the answer I've written there is accurate to three decimal places. Next, we can calculate our change in length, and this time it's change in length 2, which, again, we have our formula. Epsilon L0, Epsilon 2, L0, 2. Now, Epsilon 2, we've just calculated 1.405 times 10 to the minus 3. And the length of material 2 is once again 65 centimetres. And as we said before, that is 0 0.65 metres. And running that through the calculator gives a change in length in metres of 9.130, this time times 10 to the minus 4 metres. If I want to express that in millimetres then, I just need to times it by 1,000. And times it by 1,000 gives 0 0.913 millimetres. So again, we can refer to our diagram, and we've just calculated the change in length of material 2 as 0.913 millimetres. We have one calculation left to perform, so let's clear some space again. And I've left the important formula on there. Change in length equals the change in length of material 1 plus the change in length of material 2. So we're going to calculate the overall change in length of our composite bar. And it's just the change in length of the first piece of material, which shortened by a distance of 3.717 millimetres. And to that we're going to add the change in length of our second piece of material, which was 0 0.913. Therefore, the overall change in length as a result of the compressive force is 4.63, and our units there are millimetres.